right, welcome back to the color switch tutorial series inside Construct 3. In the last video, we got a lot of initial programming set up for the start of the game. And let's go ahead and preview what we did. So we got our ready and go to come on screen and then go off screen. So now we're ready to uh, shoot those rings across the screen and move our player. And oh, if you also noticed, our score now reads zero because it has no value, but we set it up over here to say uh, score colon space, which it does, and then the variable of score, which has no value yet. It's sitting at zero. All right. So I'm going to collapse the initialize group and I'm going to create another group and I'm going to call this player control and let's uh, let's make another group and I'm going to call this one ring spawner. In many cases, especially if you have the free version, uh, creating a group actually adds an event. You can see over here it, it's counting this even though we haven't put any events or code of any kind in it, it still counts as an event. When you have the free version you are limited to 50 events. There are some situations where you might not want to create groups for everything, uh, but this project I am pretty certain stays under the 50 event limit. And also, these two groups are going to come into play here in a little bit. So we really actually do need these two groups. In the player control group, I'm going to add event. And I'm going to choose our keyboard object. And on key pressed. And choose the key. I'm going to pick the left arrow key. And I am also going to double click when we have this whole event highlighted I'm over here on the far left of that event I'm going to double click to add another condition and that condition is going to be one of the instance variables that we created for our player object so if we go into our sprites and select our player object scroll down to instance variables and we want to compare an instance variable and the instance variable we want to compare is is turning and I want to know if it well first off you remember we said that this is turning is a true false and we're using 0 is false 1 is true so I want to know that is turning is equal to 0 which is false so if I press the left arrow key and our object is not turning I want to add an action we're going to make this thing turn so we added the tween behavior to our player object. So we're going to go into sprites, pick the player object, scroll down to the tween behaviors. I want tween one property. And that property that I want to tween is the angle. We are pressing the left arrow key. So I have a little chart here. This is what angles look like inside Construct 3 Game Engine. We start at zero, which is facing uh, straight to the right, and then it goes clockwise. So 10 degrees, 40 degrees, 90 degrees is straight down. 180 degrees would be going off to your left. 270 is up, and then 360, also zero, would be right position. So when I press the left arrow key, I want the player object to rotate to the left. So we want to rotate that way. So what we're doing is we're actually subtracting because this way is going from zero counting up. This way would be uh, reversing that. So I want to take our player object and rotate it one-third of the way to the left. Why one-third is because it is a triangle. It has three points. So a full 360 degree of motion divided by three would be uh, 120. 
So 120 times 3 gives us 360 degrees. So the end value is going to be where it ends up. So I want to take the angle of the player object, wherever, uh, whatever angle it is at, I want to take its angle. So I'm going to type in player, and there's our player object, uh, player dot angle. So that gives us our player's angle in degrees. And now I just want to subtract 120 degrees. So player dot angle minus 120. And the amount of time that I want it to do that in is something we've already set up, which was the uh, instance variable of turning, uh, what do we call it, turning speed? Right, turning speed. So to get that, we need the instance variable from the player object. So we're going to type in player dot and just type in the variable, which is turning speed. There we go. So uh, we can leave the ease at linear and no on destroy. We don't want that. Let's add that and let's preview this. So when I hit the left arrow key, it turns it 120 degrees from whatever angle it is at. And I want to show you something. If I press the left arrow, you see it does exactly 120 degrees each time. If I start pressing it a bunch of times, I end up with a, uh, a funky angle that we don't want. And that's because I'm pressing the left arrow key and adding another 120 degrees before it finishes turning. But we have something set up for that. And that is, we're going to add an action, system wait, and we want to wait the amount of time that we set up in the other, the third instance variable, which was turning weight. That was the name of it. Uh, but it's inside the player object as an instance variable, so we have to call the player object first. So type in player dot turning weight. And we had that set at 0 0.3. So what's happening here when we hit that left arrow key, it turns it 120 degrees in 0 0.2 seconds time. But we're going to wait 0 0.3 seconds, which is one-tenth of a second longer than it takes to turn before we can turn again. And to make that possible, what we need to do is tell it that this condition is not being met. So let's add an action and go to our sprites, pick our player object, and we want to uh, set an instance variable value of is turning to 1, because it's going to be true when we hit the left arrow key. Move that to the very top. So what's happening, we hit the left arrow key and our is turning variable is 0, meaning that our player object is not turning we immediately set it to true. So we are turning, which means this condition is not being met anymore. So no matter how many times we press the left arrow key, it doesn't matter because this condition is not being met at the same time. So we're going to set it to true. We're going to turn it. We're going to wait. And then we're going to add an action. Let's go back to our player and set the value is of uh, is turning to uh, zero because now we're done turning. So now this is uh, this condition is being met again and we can turn. So let's preview that and I'm going to press the left arrow key. Now I'm going to press the left arrow key as fast as I can and see it has a little weight there in between each turn and no matter what one of those three points is always pointing up. So that's exactly what we want. Now I'm going to highlight, I'm just going to click in this space, highlight this entire block of code. I'm going to hit Control C to copy and Control V to paste. And I'm going to go into the keyboard event, double click on it, click on this left arrow and change it to the right arrow. Just hit the right arrow key. And then 
the only thing we want to change is in this tween property. So double click on that and change this minus to plus and done. Let's preview that. There's our left arrow key, there's our right arrow key, and everything works exactly how it is supposed to. And that sets up our player object. The player's controls are complete. Don't forget to save. All right, that's gonna be it for this video. In the next video, we will set up our ring spawner, and I will see you then.